Owlboy. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey man, why are you talking about this game so long after its peak relevancy? Well, several reasons. First, finals! Those are real good for sucking the creativity and motivation right from the hollow shell you call a body. Second, I was waiting for this cool little physical version of the game to show up. Came with an instruction book that spoils part of the game and everything. You okay there, bud? Not looking too great. Third, I was working on another video I ended up scrapping. It was about this orange-haired she-demon that blackmailed people to join her comedy club. She's a horrible person. You'll get what's coming to you one day, Myru. Owlboy is a charming little indie platforming game made by D-Pad Studio. It's been about nine years in development before finally being fully released to the public. Now, you might think they spent that time working on this. Or this. Or all of this. But nope, they actually spent that time scientifically developing one of the most adorable main characters in any video game ever. This adorable little bird human of prey is Otis, a mute owl. He's also a bit of a major clumsy screw-up. But hey Otis, you tried man, and that's all that really matters. I'm still proud of you. And hey, you have unlimited flight powers, that's something most people can't say. Even some angels can't do that. Owls are a group of ancient revered creatures that are half bird, half human, and are considered to be pseudo guardians of this strange floating world. Oh, this is none of these important things, but his teacher, Osio, strives to make him be. Spoiler alert, he doesn't, instead just gets angry. Otis's only true friend is a soldier turned mechanic named Getty. Getty is... well, Getty is Getty. Yeah. Come Getty, let us go on this noble mission of being on town lookout. Now, let me just figure out how these carrying mechanics work and we'll be good to... Getty! Oh god, Getty, no! How could I have killed my one and only... Oh, wait, never mind, he's fine. Exploring the town, you meet a few more side characters before this mysterious shadow steals some stuff and our heroes follow them into a cave. Oh my god, it's Spider-Man! You didn't tell me this was a crossover game, Owlboy. boy! This first dungeon serves as a way to get used to the game mechanics. And there are a lot of them. First, you have to grab your gunner, then you have to aim and shoot with them, and some obstacles and enemies are breakable, while some aren't. I know this can spin and roll. Rolling just moves you forward in a direction, but spinning stuns enemies and drops your gunner. But you want to drop your gunner so you can pick up and eat fruit or throw objects to break stuff that the gunner can't. And then you unlock this teleportation button that lets you teleport your gunner right to you and is used to solve various puzzles and it's easy to forget all this if you put the game down for just a couple of minutes. So you'd better learn these controls or you're going to be having a very bad experience. After leaving the cave, it appears that a bunch of sky pirates have attacked the town, but they kind of just leave without doing anything. And Otis somehow gets blamed for all this. Yeah, Otis, how come you didn't stop the pirate fleet, huh? God, can't believe how useless you are. For some reason, despite Osio thinking Otis is an absolute failure, he sends the young Al on a very dangerous, very important mission. Attempt to control the movements of the island through the use of high-tech machinery in an ancient Al temple. Because if there's one person that should be in charge of maneuvering the entire world, it's the massive klutz you think is least capable to do anything. Otis then flies out into the world beyond. Which means this wide open area of nothing, a trinket shop run by a crazy smiling sociopath, a campfire, and several places that go nowhere at the moment. There's also an ancient temple just sitting there. Yeah, only thing guarding it are these spiky things. Why is no one taking control of the islands yet? Oh. Oh, that's why. Oh. Also during this dungeon adventure, you fight a couple of those pirate goofballs. <laughs> look at these nerds, how do these pirates do anything? These guys are a threat to the world? <laughs> what sillies. After beating them, Alfonso, a larger pirate that loves theater, decides that the pirates have gone a bit overboard <laughs> and joins Otis' party. He shoots fire bullets from a tiny musket and after you upgrade it, he just completely wrecks everything in his path. At least after it recharges. He also has a silly run cycle. Upon escaping the scary robot frog thing, Otis and his pals learn that the fans controlling the islands were never actually operational to begin with, and by the time they get to Advent, the city the pirates are attacking, it's already going very poorly for everyone who isn't a robotic sky sailor. 
Asia, knowing how much of a failure Otis and Getty are, even though they didn't actually do anything wrong this time, locks them both in the house in the middle of the city, which is probably at least 12 times more dangerous than just telling them to go home the way they came. After escaping the house and fighting through a pirate base using a woman with a broken leg and an absurd amount of explosives, Otis, Getty, and Alfonso make it to the engine of the pirate dreadnought. Getty plugs it up, but he's too busy flailing his arms around to realize that him and his two friends are about to die in the fiery explosion, then look at that, it's too late. Nice job, Getty, everyone's dead. They actually escape the fire, but are caught by the pirate captain Molstrom before they can leave the ship. Alfonso just leaves somehow, and Getty, well, Getty is Getty. Molstrom throws Otis off the side of the boat, just kind of leaves Getty to stand there and do nothing but scream, and jumps off to cause havoc in Advent. <laughs> the game then gets surprisingly dark. Advent is destroyed to just a few floating rocks, the town is full of refugees, there's now a graveyard full of dead soldiers and citizens, Getty becomes depressed about the fact that all of his comrades are dead, and Molstrom got the second of three ancient and powerful relics, seemingly unstoppable at this point. But after a pep talk from Alfonso, everyone finds their resolve again, and is determined to stop the pirates threatening not only their town, but the whole world. However, this is where we end. This is the kind of game that really has to be played to be appreciated. While the story may not be the best one I've ever seen in the game, it's definitely one that has to be experienced for oneself. The main draw of this game is clearly the art. So much time was spent on every room, parallax, character, even little animations that may not be noticed. It's definitely a beautiful game, especially considering it's an indie title. If I had to nitpick, I'd say that maybe the ending was a bit too ambiguous for my taste. Basically, any idea for what happens after the credits finish is probably a valid and possible idea, and it doesn't really give any closure to the game. But overall, this is a nice little game to play if you have some time on your hands. Playing through it and even doing a completionist run doesn't really take that long. There's even some fun bonus secrets and backstory for doing all of the extra stuff, letting you know more about the world this game takes place in. In the end, I'd say that this game is worth checking out, if anything but for the art and music, which are phenomenal. While the gameplay and story may not be the best I've ever experienced, they certainly don't subtract from the game as a whole in any way. It was fun, I enjoyed it, and I think it shows how great an indie game can be when done by the right people. Yay!